Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 160. I need to change the page number 160. And today is our lesson number 63. Let's take a look at it. The very first problem on the page. The very first problem on the page, 160. We are told that the glass is filled with 10 ounces of water. All right. So we have a glass which is filled with 10 ounces of water. We are also told that 0.1 ounce evaporates, evaporated rather, each day for 20 days. What percent what percentage of the water evaporated in the 20 days given the fact that 0.01 percent of, uh, of rather 0.01 ounce has been evaporating for 20 days and the glass was 10 ounces in the beginning. Very simple, very straightforward. There is a solution. We have 0.01 evaporating for 10, 20 days. We know that 0.01 times 10 is 0.1. Because to multiply it by 10, you just take your decimal and you move it by one place if you're multiplying by 10. So I just want to start out with 10. Therefore, 0.01 times 20 must be 0.2. So question simply is 0.2 is what percent of 10? Very simple, very straightforward. Now if you have not watched any of my percentage problem and if you're not very good with the percentage problem, in the percentage problem, the biggest hurdle a lot of people have is coming up with the right equation. This is a very straightforward, very simple equation, but sometimes it gets more complicated. If they tell you 60% or 20% of, of some number is equal to 35% of some other number, you have to know how to set up the equation like that without having to worry about it. And if you want to learn that, just 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 type in my name, just type in Kishwani and just type in percentage problems and you will find them. Just type in percentage problems or percentage with the GRE, something like that. I know we are not here for GRE, I know that we are here for GMAT, but uh, percentage and then GRE and you will find a whole bunch of percentage problem that I did. Uh, uh, and math is math, math does not change and you will get to practice. In those, in those problems, we learn that there are four words in which you translate. When, we, when we're trying to come up with the equation, a right equation for the percentage problem, there are four words that we have to translate, word for word. And the four words are these. 0 0.2 is, is means equal. Is is your first word. Is. Is means equals. What is your unknown? What is your unknown? Percent means over a hundred. Percent means out of hundred. That's what the word percent literally means. Percent, percent means exactly what it says. Percent means per one hundred. Thirty-seven percent means thirty-seven out of one hundred. Four point two percent means four point two over a hundred. Ninety-six point seven percent means ninety-six point seven over one hundred percent means over 100. Of means times. Of means times. And finally 10. That's it. Now we have the right equation. Now it's just a matter of solving it. It's very simple, very straightforward. Just solve for x. Cross multiply. The oh, first thing you can get to is this. Oh, this is good. Oh, this is too simple. The 10 is gone. Oh, x equals 10 times 0.2. x equals 10 times 0.2, which is just 2. That's your answer. 2 ounces has evaporated, or rather 2 ounces have evaporated over the course of 
20 days that you're talking about, the answer is D. The answer is D. So we are left with only 8 ounces at the end of 20 days if 0.01 ounces had been evaporating for 20 days. The answer is D. Let's do the next one, shall we? The next about the glucose. Number 59. The one about the glucose. So here we have 15 ounces of glucose, or rather 15 grams of glucose per 100 cubic centimeter of solution. Thus we are told that the solution is of such a nature that every 100 cubic centimeter of solution contains 15 grams of glucose. And the question again is very straightforward. How much glucose is there? How much glucose in 45 cubic centimeter of solution? Well, first thing we have to realize that if 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 100 contains if 100 contains oh my I shouldn't be so lazy my handwriting is horrible if 100 cubic centimeter contains 15 grams that implies that 50 cubic centimeter will contain 7.5 gram that also implies that 45 cubic centimeter will have little, little less than 7.5 gram. Now in the exam I would not write it like this, little less than 7.5. This is how you write it, 7.5 with a minus sign on top of it, grams. The correct answer, whatever it is, is just little under 7.5. Let's look at the answer choice. I'm curious. Well, there you go. The only answer choice that I see that is just a little under 7.5 is 6.75. It's not going to be as low as 6.5, trust me. And 5.5, and, and let's put it this way, if you don't buy, if you don't buy uh, D, then at least we know for a fact that A, B, and C are gone. Obviously, how can it be A? Uh, 50 grams would have 7.5. A, B, and C are too, too silly, too small. Answer is either D or A. If you like, we can do it properly. You want to do it properly? Or no? Let's do it properly. If you feel that I'm doing a half-assed job, then do let's do it, let's, let's let's do it properly. If you want to do it properly, it's a very it's a simple it's a simple ratio problem. It's a very simple ratio problem is what we're dealing with. Here's your glucose. Here's our solution. We are told that there are 15 grams of glucose out of 100 cubic centimeter of solution. Question is how much in a 45? That's it. Let's just solve for x. So x equals 15 times 45 over 100. Divide top and bottom by 5. 45 becomes 9. 100 becomes 20. Let's, let's have one more goal. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. 15 becomes 3. And 20 becomes 4. 3 times 9 is 27 divided by 4. 20, I'm going to do it here. 27 divided by 4. How many 4's in a 27? 27 has 6 4's. 6 4's are 24. 6 4's are 24. But we don't have 24, we have 27, which means we have 3 remainder. There you go, voila, 6 and 3 quarters. There is no answer, 6 and 3 quarters. It's the same as 6 and 3 quarters. 6 and 3 quarters. 6 4's are 24 with the remainder of 3. That's all. That's about it. I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.